קובי פרחי, שלום. אהלן, בוקר טוב. אהלן וסהלן. ולקאם טו קלצ'ר בראז. שמח להיות פה. קובי, זה גרייט פלז'ר ואונור להיות פה בבית שלך ולהתכנס אחד מהמוניקים הפנומנים שאני יודע שאני יודע שקוראים אולפנדלנד. אתה more than 20 years old now as a band yeah and it is I think about 10 years ago that you have started making so much buzz in Turkey and especially when it comes to our cousins our neighbors yes how do you do it Kobe first of all uh, I want to say uh, you are most welcome to my home And I'm very happy uh, to have you here to drink some Turkish coffee with me. Wonderful coffee. Equals your music. Yes. And, uh, well, I think it's kind of an enigma to try and realize how did Orphanland succeed that much in the Arab world and in Turkey, despite the fact that we are Israelis and Jews succeeding so much in the Muslim world. But I, I would say that The main reason for this is that culture and music, they gain some secret powers that politicians cannot find. Because politicians, as good as they may be, they are moved by interests, uh, by some agendas whatsoever, while musicians are purely bringing people together without any interest or agenda. We don't force our ideas on no one and we don't claim to be owners or of any absolute truth. We just come, play music as simple as it is and this is, this is magic and true music. If you look throughout the history of music, if you see people like Leonard Cohen, Mercedes Sosa, rest in peace and so on. They were musicians that did a change, that, that they cannot change the world, but they can show other ways throughout music. This is what we do. This is what we call music power. Yes, it is. There, is no, it is. there are no better words to describe it this. It is. I, I, I personally describe music as, as a religion, actually, because I follow and respect all religions, but I have learned and grown to see it through Orphaned Land. That music succeeded to bring people together more than any priest or rabbi or imam that I've met without with all the respect to religions and I have but music is the better solution that I can I can see today I can definitely say that orphaned land today is the most welcome Israelis in the Arab world and in Turkey more than any politician or Or even artist and we, we need to remember that we are a heavy metal band we are not a, a peace and love hippies or stuff like that so this is even showing more the power of music to, to make a change Kobe uh, you are one of the founders of Orphan Land you exist now uh, as I said more than 20 years you yes. started as resurrection Yes. And you changed the name to Orphan Land. Yes. And you are the lead singer of this fantastic uh, band. By the way, I think it will be accurate to describe Orphan Land as being more than a heavy metal band because you incorporate into your music so many influences. Yes. Uh, so many musical styles that's true not only that you sing uh, phrases from the Bible and the Quran uh, New Testament New Testament thank yeah. you you also combine with metal Israeli music Middle Eastern music yes what does it how does it feel for you Kobe when you are standing on a stage in Istanbul? And you look 
at your devoted fans coming from all over the Middle East, especially for this. What do you feel? How does it feel? It's, a, it's one of the best questions that someone asked me, and I will tell you why. Because it's one of the most mixed feeling I get to feel in my life, and I will explain to you why. I'm standing on the stage as an Israeli, as a Jew, while thousands of people around the crowd, they are mainly Muslims from Turkey, from Iran, from Egypt, from Syria, and from Lebanon. I'm singing in Arabic, I'm singing in Turkish, I'm singing in Hebrew. They sing with me all the time, including the Hebrew. They know the words? Yeah. Well, not fluently, but special parts from the song, I just put the microphone, they answer the words in Hebrew. Amazing. The feeling is mixed. On one hand, I literally feel that moment that this is a breaking of something that everyone would think it is utopia. Because we are taking a, a utopic idea, we are bringing it down to earth. That is one of the most amazing feelings that I can feel because I really feel that we serve a good purpose and succeed to do it that moment. On the other hand, I have a frustrating uh, feeling while this is happening because I don't think that people get to understand the power of this moment. And for me, that moment should be the headline of the news at, at the same evening and the week after. And people are still saying to us that we should feel lucky if we got a spot in some newspaper in the middle page. But I think that standing as an Israeli, as a Jew, in front of thousands of Muslims, what is more breaking news than that? So, so it's a mixed feeling. That, that you, you, you think that you are doing the best thing in the world and the greatest news, the most rare thing that is happening in the Middle East is happening right here, right now, at this stage. But no one can really figure out and understand how much this moment is big, yet. Kobe, I can't speak on behalf of the media, but for us, Culture Buzz, you are definitely making... I know. Some That's of the most important headlines yes. that we have seen at all. Yes, I know. I know. I speak in general. Of course, there are people that are amazed. Of course, you guys and, and uh, Culture Buzz and all the people at, at uh, Kastum and the MFA, you know, and, and there are even more people. Some of them are even politicians, you know, we got a peace prize, like I told you. From Erdogan's, uh, Erdogan's uh, advisor. advisor. Yes, yes we have seen. Can I show it to you? Absolutely. Yeah? Can I just go? Maybe we can do it later. Okay. I would like, in your permission, to ask you, you, s you said something very interesting that caught my ear. Mm -hmm. You spoke about frustration. So here comes the question. Could it be that part of the frustration for you doing the amazing thing, really amazing, I have no other word that you and Orphanland have been doing now for quite a while. Part of the frustration is that in many of the countries where your most devoted fans come from, it is illegal to play your music. This is yes. one part. And the other part, it is still impossible for you to go and perform there. Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, we have walls to break. And uh, yeah, those walls are, are the walls that, as an Israeli, my only friendly, friendly border is the Mediterranean Sea. And despite the, the fact that they like us and they want us, we cannot go now. I want to go to, you know, an, an artist he wants to communicate with his fans, he wants to meet them, he wants to play for them, he wants to share feelings with them and we are incapable to do it because, because it's, the borders are closed. I cannot do it with my Israeli passport and I'm still trying to figure out the way to do it. I thought I might go to Egypt just like that. I want to go straight to Egypt. 
I want to go to a shelter in some lousy building, get me 50 fans of Orphan Land, and I will play them on, on my, with my shoes I will play, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it's frustrating because there, there is a phrase in, in, of Neil Young which says, keep on rocking in the free world. And this is still not the free world. So I hope that this day will come and we will get to play to our Arab fans. I know that if this is, you know, if this is a movement of, I think today we have maybe dozens of fans, maybe a hundred thousands of fans in the whole Arab world. Impressive. Yes, but it could be million. And one day, inshallah, it will. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. And listening to your music, uh, including watching your uh, recent fantastic DVD, congratulations. One of the things that uh, stand out watching you, listening to you, is that your music is so optimistic. Yes. Yes, it's heavy metal, but it's only heavy metal as a starting point. And from that point we are going to a very non-metallic subject, because metal is always about darkness, antisocial. Uh, it's, metal is, is mainly uh, a music that protests against many things. Lyrics are always strong, but we come from a different angle. We come from being positive, being optimistic, showing in our music, you know, you see when, when we play on stage, we have a lot of smiles on stage. The crowd is jumping and, and parting as if it wasn't a heavy metal concert, as if it was some wedding or, or something like that. So yeah, this is a very optimistic heavy metal. And I think that heavy metal is essential here because the Middle Eastern life is some kind of a heavy metal, the way they are. Interesting. It's hardcore to live in the Middle East. It's demanding. Yeah, it's it's quite demanding. Yeah, I, I told a friend of mine uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Life in the Middle East is is more heavy metal than than uh, jazz mm -hmm. to me okay. and to me alone. Interesting. Yeah, copy of uh, your albums during the years: Sahara, Mabul, El Nora, Lila, and All Warrior. Yes. If you had to pick one or two songs that you are particularly very proud of, which songs will it be? Wow. Sorry for the unfair question. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, it's, well, it's not like... Because saying, I know that all, all of the songs are like your children. So yes. Yeah. And, and usually my, my answer will be, how can you say that if they are all your children? But... I think there is one in particular from the album of Wario, which I consider lyrically wise and musically wise to be the one I love the most and it, it's called Disciples of the Sacred Oath, number two. It's the song that I use phrases from the Quran and I think it's the most upfront song we ever wrote speaking to our Muslim cousins and and trying to see if we can end the wars between us, if you can just read the lyrics, so it's, it's there. Some of them didn't like it because we used the parts from the Quran, uh -huh. which is haram in the, in the Muslim uh, religion, though I, I'm not accepting it because the Quran never asked, don't sing me, and, and if the Quran is described as the words of God and music is a gift from God, then Divinity plus divinity cannot be blasphemy. <laughs> That's the way I see it. And I think the best proof that uh, you are absolutely right is the sheer numbers of your most devoted fans coming from all over yeah. the yeah. Arab yeah. and Muslim world. You mentioned the number 100,000 people, which is extraordinary. Yes, yes. And so th this would be the song, uh, definitely the one that I will pick. Kobe, not too many people know that, but you grew up in Jaffa. Mm -hmm. Jaffa is what we call in Israel a mixed city. Yeah, it is. Arab, Israeli, Muslim, Christian, Jewish. Yes. So, basically, it's, almost, it's only natural 
that you will become the lead singer of Orphanland. I, I can definitely say that from my own personal perspective, Jaffa is everything that I reflect in my art. I remember when I was a kid, I used to walk on the streets during the year. And at some times of the year, I would see, you know what, even near, around Hanukkah, it was, it was really close because I could see Hanukkiyot, Hanukkiyaz, or how, you, how do you say, say plural of Hanukkiyah in English? Candle, candle, candle lights, no. Candelaria, candelaria, something like that. Anyway, let's call it candelarias. I used to see candelarias on, on a Jewish windows, and I used to see a moon of, of Islam on some of the windows. The crescent, the half crescent, yeah. 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 And I used to see a cross on some of the windows, and Hanukkah and Christmas and, you know, another Muslim holiday, I, I can't remember if it's Eid al-Fitr or Ramadan, but never mind, it was like, Jaffa was the city with the amount, with the biggest amount of holidays in the world. You have enjoyed all worlds. All holidays. All, <laughs> all worlds and all holidays yeah. and all uh, delicious yes. treats and uh, cuisines. That's right. All cuisines, the music that you get to hear. The neighbors are playing Arab music. You listen to the synagogue. You listen to the church. So you hear Gregorian music. You hear so many sounds and languages. What we, what we call in Hebrew, not only that it's fusion, it's confusion. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and listen to Orphan Land's music. It's, it's a reflection of it in my eyes. And, and I, I, the, the thing that I take the most from my childhood till that day is the fact that my grandfather, R.I.P., he had uh, a factory. In this factory he had employees. It was a textile factory. And the employees was, was girls that uh, they were making these pants. Sewing? How it for? Sewing. Sewing. They were also Muslim and Christians and we were like one family. We were literally like one family. Some of these employees are still calling my grandma till that day to wish her happy Passover and happy New Year. Amazing. And this is the example. I grew up in coexistence and I saw, since I was very little, I saw that coexistence is possible. And it's not even possible, it's very easy to achieve it. So that was it for me. And I carry it till that day and I'm doing my best. Lucky us. Yes. One more question in your permission. Football. Yes. You are a passionate fan of Maccabi Yafo. Yes. For you, Kobe, where do music and football connect? This is a great question and I will tell you why. Maccabi Afo was always a musical football team. I will tell you why. The legendary goalkeeper of Maccabi Afo. Kabilio. Yes. May, you, Kabilio, may you rest in peace. Rest in peace. He was the only goalkeeper in the world that was a, a literally singer except Julio Iglesias. Really? Which was also a goalkeeper. I didn't know that. Yeah. And he was a great singer. And uh, Jaffa, which is mostly consisted with Jewish Bulgarian Jews, and Bulgarian Jews are known as a very musical community. They always go to a restaurant in Jaffa, get some booze, and start to sing. Uh -huh. So it's, a, it's kind so of... So it's a, in the blood. It's in the blood. And, and I'm a follower of Cabilio, rest in peace. He was, he was a friend of my uh, grandfather, rest in peace. They were friends. Jaffa was like a small village. I used to go on the street and see all the football stars. And I used to be very excited. I used to go with the t-shirt of Maccabi Afo. And I, I really wanted to be a football player when, when I was a kid. Even though that I was playing on, on it wasn't on a, on a football field with the ball. I used to play in the middle of the road yeah, like, with, with the Coca-Cola can. Like all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, football and music in Java, they go together. They go together, head, yeah. hand in hand. Even, even the coexistence is going together in Maccabi Afo because Maccabi Afo also have Arab 
uh, football players and we have also Arab fans and and yeah this is it also in the football field and instead of playing for Barcelona you play for Orphanland yes <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the better choice actually I believe so <laughs> not financially maybe but <laughs> Kobe, uh, you tour extensively. You had a huge European tour, if I'm not wrong, in December. Yeah. And since then, you even made it all the way to India. India, Mexico. Is it true to say that you perform abroad more than you perform in Israel? Or do you the, think it's uh, the yeah. same? No, it's not. It's, it's not. If you just take the last three months, You, we, we, as, you, as you told me just before the interview, you were actually living in airports. Yes, yes, we, we were literally living in airports and take the last three, four months we played around 40 shows. Wow. And only four of them were in Israel. So it's like 10 percent, actually. 10 percent of our show are in our homeland and the rest of the 90 percent are all over the globe. We were in India. Mexico, we were actually in no man's land because we played on a cruise from Miami to the Caribbean uh -huh. and we were all over Europe in 15 countries Fantastic. Uh, just, just lately and next month we are going to Brazil for wow. the first time. Wow, yeah. congratulations. Thanks. You have mentioned that uh, you were awarded a special prize mm. by uh, the Turkish uh, Prime Minister's top advisor. Yes. And you were kind enough, Kobe, to offer to come and bring it and show it to our Facebookers. Yes. So maybe this is the best time. I can. Definitely, it is. And until Kobe returns with the trophy, this is the time to mention that uh, we are conducting this interview in Kobe's home in Batyam, which is not far away from Yafo. Here comes Kobe and here is the trophy. Okay, first, this is, uh, this is a prize we got from Istanbul Commerce University. The, the great thing about it is that the deacon of the university, the dean, the dean, sorry, the dean of the university, he asked his students to pick the group that mostly deserved the prize and he, he just sent them away. They had a lot of arguments about it and, and uh, eventually they chose us and it was very difficult decision for them because, because of the political situation between Israel and Turkey. Imagine that from that university there were protests against Israel and the same people succeed to award an Israeli band. Amazing. So this is a, a prize we got from the Istanbul Commerce University. Impressive. Yes. And Truly uh, impressive. We, we are very proud of it. And the second one, which we just got recently, this is the one we got from the Prime Minister's advisor. Uh, his name is uh, Hussein Tojsu. And you can see here there is a dove carrying a leaf, uh, olive, olive, uh, uh, olive branch. Yes. With, with, with two flags? Yes, and two leaves are actually the flags of Turkey and Israel. Amazing. And this is... In, in, in times that the Israeli ambassador is like expelled from, from Turkey, to receive that prize is, is just a proof that there is another way. And I will tell you even more why. We never expressed any political opinion. We never said we are pro, anti, left or right wing. We never... We, we don't go into politics in terms of taking sides, and we never do that. And this is just the proof that this is the best way for an artist to show other ways. In Hebrew slang today we will say kavod, yeah. which means respect, <laughs> R-E-S-P-E-C-T. -E Kobe, will you be kind enough to yes. allow us a close-up? Really impressive. The first time we close-up. Fantastic. All right. We spoke about the past. We spoke about the present. You mentioned Brazil yes. as your next tour. We touched upon the frustration. Yes. And we used the Arab word, inshallah, Amen. describing the day that will hopefully come soon where you can perform 
in our neighbors', neighbors yeah. countries. When you look ahead, in addition to all that, what do you wish yourself? What do you wish all Finland? Myself, I, I would start with myself. I wish uh, to have a family and I wish to have kids that will be proud of uh, what I do. Uh, with Orphan Land and, and in terms of art, I wish myself to continue to do the things that we know how to do best and I really wish us to succeed, to enter Arab countries, to make a change, to show the other way, stronger, in a stronger way, to all sides and, and I wish, of course, that peace will, will prevail in this region and, and that my kids won't have to be soldiers. This is utopia, but I believe in breaking utopia. So I wish that my kids will just live a normal life in the free world and, and they gain friendship from all the Middle Eastern countries and we will have heaven on earth. As, as hippie as it may sound, I know it's possible. Kobe, what can I say? Thank you, for, thank you very much for your very kind hospitality. Thank you for the example you are setting for all of us. And inspired by the unique phenomenon called Orphan Land, I will conclude this interview in your permission saying Todaraba. Thank you and Shukran. Thank you and Shukran.